talking to you about what they don't tell you about moving to Africa, the cost of living conditions, and is it really worth it? I can subscribe. Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kemto Bear and today I have the Nilotic Empress. So we're gonna be drinking, can, you can have your your tea or mm -hmm. chardonnay, chardonnay yeah chardonnay. or wine yes, whichever or you wine, like whichever you prefer mm -hmm. so today Co cost of living and yeah. living conditions yeah so and if it is really worth it yeah so mm -hmm. i have some questions so that it can guide us uh, where this topic is gonna go so tell us about where you are from and to bit about yourself so my name is uh, is uh, ruby and they they know me as the Nilotic Empress from YouTube, and um, I'm a Lua from from Kisumu region. Yeah, that's all I have to say about myself. Yeah, and she has a YouTube channel that I will link down below, or it will pop up right here. Yes. Yeah. So where were you? Or oh, you said where you're born? Yeah, I was. And where, yeah. where were you working? All right. So guys, I used to be. Um, Okay, I left the I left Kenya uh, in two o seven and moved to the Emirates um, of Abu Dhabi. I lived in Dubai partly and then moved to um, to to Abu Dhabi, the capital city of the M United Arab Emirates. And but I was working. I got recruited here in Kenya with an agency. Uh, do, we went there for sales sales uh, doing sales jobs. But then I worked for the sales company for like um, one and a half year. Then after that, after gaining experience, customer care experience, I applied other jobs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So wh why did you move back to Kenya from the UAE? Uh, so I, you know, home is always best, as you as you know. But the thing is, I. I had contemplated coming home for so many years, but because I was afraid of the security, because you know, in the Emirates, I had in the Emirates of of, of UAE, I, ha I had um, okay. job security, and plus here in Kenya, you just know how Tunakwangana Maisha, any Maisha, the life that I had before, it was a very tough, tough life, no job, uh, tamaking no proper living condition for me as, because i come from a very poor background so um going there it was a bit much more better for me but after some time i i got tired because my job was very demanding mm -hmm. sleep deprived the money was great but i just the job didn't give me happiness anymore mm -hmm. so i felt like i've contemplated coming home for so many years but i was afraid to take that move mm -hmm. but then during the pandemic it happened that i had to come back mm -hmm. so yeah that is the reason why i came back i came back because i i had planned to stay in the emirates for approximately 10 years mm -hmm. which i did and after my 10 years oh. my contract uh, i didn't renew my contract so i had to come back yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys, uh, she she used to be a flight attendant. Yeah, I used to work until for, yeah. recently when she decided to come back home. Yeah, yeah, and that's my my dream job. But there. I'll be asking you so many questions. Is it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I actually I'm traveling all over the all world. All over the world because you like new traveling. culture. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, so, which other countries have you worked before? No, I only worked. That is the only. F diaspora place Never that i've ever to. been apart oh. from that no yeah mm -hmm. so what's your living experience in the uae um it was okay mm -hmm. i would say it was okay first of all the country is very very much hot mm -hmm. the country uh you're very restricted especially when it comes to um relationships like for example you're not allowed to to have uh, like a, a husband like a like a partner Boyfriend. but yeah. people do have them anyway yeah. you're not allowed to like uh like have a baby out of wedlock because if you do your company will just fire you straight away oh. and also there is a lot of restrictions you know mm -hmm. but overall it was it was a great experience a finance financially depending oh. on which company you're working for 
so yeah, yeah it was good okay mm. so is electricity water and in- internet reliable and fast how do they compare to similar utilities in the uae and in africa kenya of specifically course. like i've lived there for a total of uh, let's say 12 from 2007 to 2020 and there was no day that electricity was ever off no day that we ever lacked water unless they were do- if they were doing maintenance in your building so it is very re- reliable internet is a bit more quite expensive but life there is very expensive yeah. compared to here in kenya yeah internet here in yeah kenya, it's quite um, life is a bit more cheaper based on in yeah, in, in Kenya, life yeah. is a bit more cheaper because internet there is is way too expensive, you know. Mm-hmm. So utility like how bills. Much per month? Uh, oh. Internet, I was paying. You can you have a package yeah. based with TV and the package oh. used to be like uh, eleven. You can pay up to eleven thousand per month. Wow. Oh. Yeah, but, but so, so it's a package with TV and all that. Yeah, and but your phone. No, oh, okay. your phone is separate. Mm-hmm. Phone is separate for your phone. I had another another one for the phone that I used to pay a hundred and like uh, like three thousand five hundred to four thousand a month, mm-hmm. and then internet home internet I used to pay uh, ten thousand. So shillings. so that's like let's say for example uh, fifteen or fourteen thousand. That's just internet. Kenan but shillings. for me in my my where. I never used to pay uh, a utility because my company paid Peter accommodation and utility and everything else. So that oh. was good. And can you compare the internet here in Africa with <laughs> in Kenya, yeah, for in example, internet and electricity here? Yeah. Is it fast? Is it reliable? Mm, I feel like no. Internet in the Emirates is a bit more reliable and a bit more fast because mm-hmm. here. Here we have, but it's not very, you know, even sometimes clear, you know, when you're oh. trying to download something, you can't, you can't easily download it. There yeah. it's, it's very fast. fast yeah. 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 But we have the best internet so far in Africa. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We do. But then now, just now I'm and getting used to it to because it, sometimes even when you are here, yeah, you, used to, you see off, it was going it off and down. on, off and on. And yeah. also electricity goes off often yeah. water you know it's not very you know it's not, not very, very like, co- reliable. convenient like yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's 30 like mostly it's like 30 dollars that's 3000 kenya shillings yeah it's for only internet in kenya it's cheaper but yeah. the quality is it's a bit a more lot. lower right yeah, and low it's not fast yeah it's not fast even mm-hmm. water is very cheap here but also it's not, not always there <laughs> <laughs> but we get used to it, you know. Yeah, we get, you used, get to used to it. To yeah. it. The mm. quality of life here is more, mm. it's more quality. Yeah. More, yeah, more easier. Fresh hair, yeah. weather is Good a bit food, more better. Fresh, there, there is is hot food. There is processed water, I, not fresh. I I, I tested the water for when I was just in the airplane. Salty. <laughs> yeah. It's it's uh it's like gel. Yeah, so you I have can to, compare it with gel. You have to always buy water. Yeah, yeah. You can't you can't drink tap water. That's yeah, here that's water is really fresh, mm-hmm. like tap water, just mm-hmm. tap water. Mm-hmm. Is it like Kanjo? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fresh. Kenya, on any fill, uh, did you fill up uh, your shipping container with furniture when you're moving back here? No, I actually bought furniture in Kenya because guys, yeah. believe you me, mm-hmm. furniture we have that we have here in Kenya is the same furniture. If you go to uh, Homes R Us, uh, mm-hmm. no, what is it? I must say Home uh, uh, Furniture Palace mm-hmm. or most furniture places, high-end furniture places in Mombasa Road. Mm-hmm. The same furniture they have it in, in IKEA, Dubai. In yeah. the, no, IKEA Not is a bit IKEA. more low quality. Oh, IKEA is low quality. Yes. Wow, I IKEA is that. like yeah. Always hear people saying IKEA, IKEA, IKEA. I thought it's no. high quality. IKEA, no, I, IKEA is like things that doesn't last very long. Oh. That is up my experience with mm-hmm. IKEA. Yeah. But uh, so I I had to buy couch here. I bought couch here, so I did not mm-hmm. ship any couch. What I ship was my television. Mm-hmm. Uh, I came with it just like a hand luggage hand you luggage. Know? yeah i came oh. with it as, as a as a not hand luggage what is it cargo check-in check in. i checked yeah, it check in, in with my flight with mm-hmm. a one small suitcase and my my wow. tv mm-hmm. and is the shipping 
expensive e, to ship things yes like i would for, say yes okay. you a container is not as cheap mm-hmm. honestly because for example if let's say seats mm-hmm. were like a cost a co- a cost uh, how much let's say the seat cost um i can't remember but la- let's just say for example 200,000 right you mm-hmm. buy a seat let's say let's say not 200 let's say 100,000 for yeah. seat you bought mm-hmm. but then you have to pay for container to mm-hmm. ship it so wow. uh container in itself will cost you another five thousand dirhams is how much we'll just times it when i'm five thousand dirhams is uh is uh, a bit more yeah. so it will cost you to bring a container will cost you five between four to five thousand depending dirhams. on how big your container is mm-hmm. so i remember i brought washing machine mm-hmm. i brought TV set. I brought my my what is it called? I bought that TV TV uh, stand. TV stand. Mm. I brought a bed. I brought and mm. uh, we used the container. Me and me and uh, uh, a lady and a friend, uh, and she oh, b- brought couch mm-hmm. and all. And we we paid like, I think we paid like five thousand. Yeah, five thousand is, is like one hundred and forty thousand Kenyan shillings. Yeah, so let's say you buy a seat for two hundred thousand, and then container costs you that much. Uh-huh. So, what is the difference between buying a seat here in uh, Furniture Palace for two hundred thousand? And you haven't even uh, put tax care when it reaches. Yeah? No, no, no. Usually, you usually, you if you pay for container, oh, the container deals with that. that. Oh, okay. The only thing is just a delivery. They just you just arrange for your delivery and stuff like that. Oh, okay. So, so the next question is mm. is there anything else you recommend people moving here should bring uh, people who are moving back to kenya what should uh, they bring bring clothes <laughs> bring outfits yeah for example there is a very nice um nice company that i like uh, if you are from the uk bring clothes from uh, um from uh, or from ireland bring clothes from pennies it's called mm-hmm. pennies oh. Pe- it's called Primark. Pen- Oh, or Primark, Primark, bring yeah. things from Primark, where the underwear, nini nini, all this because crap it's stuff. Really expensive. It's here. Here, it's the quality is a it's, bit more it's lower. It's all good and it's expensive. And I can tell you. Second can, hand has yeah. has hiked hiked the market. Yes, with, you it's know. like second hand. It's the same price as Primark. Or, exactly. Or pennies. Yeah. Just buy new clothes. Yeah. And bring them. Ship yeah. them here. Like now, I have friends in the UK. I'm thinking mm. of asking them because. Remember my entire entire when I when I moved from the Emirates, mm-hmm. I shipped things ahead of me, but I didn't know the airport was gonna be closed. So yeah, I thought I was catching know about the pandemic. Huh? Yeah, I was catching a flight, so I sent my things ahead of me. So all my clothes, everything, my gadgets, everything that I had that I owned in the Emirates, the KRA people and the custom people just sort of confiscated them, like yeah, uh, auctioned them, because I was on lockdown. And when I came, and then I did something wrong. I gave them a wrong, wrong telephone number. I, I mean, so they were trying to reach me, but they couldn't. But then by the time I came, actually b- before I came, I asked somebody to try and pick them up, but they were quoting more than 200,000 Kenya mm. shillings. So I wasn't able to pick my things. Then when I came, I tried to also pick them up. They quoted the same amount. So I just abandoned my, like I, they said they were gonna auction my things to pay for the bill that, you know. That's really Because sad. of the COVID, the yeah, things stayed. COVID really messed you up. They stayed in the, in that place for five hours, for five, five months, months. Al- almost five months. So, wow. so yeah. Yeah, so another thing, how safe is Nairobi? Do you feel safe on a personal level? Nairobi, um, it depends. It depends on what area you are mm. and where you stay. Do you stay, what, what type of, of community do you stay in? Um, I feel like, so far, so good. I feel mm. like it's safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, depending, you have to have security, of course, in your home where you stay. Mm-hmm. Where I stay, we have security and that. I feel a bit more safe, but then it depends on where you go. You cannot just trust. Yeah. You cannot Especially just... if you are a foreigner, you should like. Okay, this is the next question. What's the best neighborhoods to live in for returnees, Pan African people, diaspora? Like, where's the best? And you can tell people they can move to. Mm, I think in the up, um, in the ranches. Yeah. Like in the like in if you have it depends on your also on your pockets. If you have money, I will suggest 
because this is the area of my topic you can go to mudaiga if you have really ah, that's you a have for rich really, really people money. yeah runda runda lovington lovington uh, kileleshwa kileleshwa karen karen yeah and uh, Kilimani Lovington is more of you can get a one bedroom for 40,000 Kenyan shillings. Kilimani? Yes, for one bedroom. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. And then two bedroom to three bedroom can get from 90,000 Kenyan shillings to 100,000. And sometimes it goes up to 140,000 Kenyan shillings. It depends with your pocket, right? It just depend on your pockets. In Nairobi, yeah. let's say you can get honestly, mm -hmm. I feel like it's your men it's your, your mentality. mentality. You can actually save that money instead of renting and putting all yeah. that money in giving a landlord. Yeah. You can go to a cheaper estate, you know, mm -hmm. and pay less yeah, for a actually, better house, even yeah. better than than the house that you're paying in Kleleshwa, but it's just the name of the area. Yeah, it's very true. Like for example, Umoja, you can yeah. get a beautiful house in Umoja, mm -hmm. very great fittings and everything mm -hmm. and pay much less than what yeah. you would pay in Kleleshwa. Mm -hmm. Then you would also be in Thika Road, you can really get even garden estate you can yeah. really get affordable housing then you would be smart to yeah. actually pay stay. less the where you stay and then actually uh, buy invest. property you know yeah. invest and then save that money and buy property but sometimes people feel like they have stayed at school like if oh. i live in Uganda, <laughs> If I live in Kilele, you be people's rent. And you're just making somebody <laughs> just else's rich, rich for status, yes, you know? Yeah. So for me, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah. I'm for but buying. Sometimes it's, mm. a, sometimes it's a foreigner. It's like a complete foreigner. Who doesn't even want to buy? No, no, own. maybe they want to buy, but the laws, you know, the laws are really tricky in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, you mm. have to like marry someone so that it can be more easier. To get land? Get oh, land right. And things like that. That. But still, yeah. I know there are people who live, like for example, uh, me, I live, I don't live in Kileleshua, but the yeah. houses here are beautiful. Are really nice. They yeah. are really beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you want more on that, you can always contact me on email. I can advise you more on that. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you meet people and what do you do for fun? <laughs> I do YouTube for fun. How I meet people, meet people like what, like people to mingle. I don't yeah, go clubbing. I don't dating go dating or things um, like that. No, mm. not yet. I'm just two months here at home. Yeah. Right now, my priorities are set on other things. I'm mm -hmm. not. I'm not interested in mingling, mingling and stuff like that. I have no time because I'm very yeah. busy here. So me, me personally, yeah. like living in Nairobi, I can tell you like. It's really tricky to meet like really honest, and reliable, authentic. authentic people. They'll smile on your face, yeah, they'll smile, but you really have to like see their in true intentions. So I suggest maybe even Facebook, you can do that. You can meet people on Facebook mm -hmm. or you just go out for uh, in a restaurant. For me, I feel like meeting, like going on a restaurant, taking yourself on a restaurant, find restaurants, you can find like people like you're more on your more authentic uh, or restaurant just try a conversation with people i'm an yes. introvert that would yeah. work <laughs> or facebook try facebook i don't know man i don't know Tina. like okay it reaches up when you are at a certain age it gets a bit more difficult to make friends i, I uh -huh. think and right now i'm like i don't have because you know i left the country and came yeah. back after 12 years people mm -hmm. have moved on you cannot be like uh, very true looking for people to you know to be friends with and stuff like that they've moved on <laughs> so sometimes um right now i'm i'm trying i'm trying we to try see we you know. met like we are friends and we met because of you to yeah we get, met because of you too, right? yeah yes. and now look at her we yeah are here. yes mm -hmm. so i think you too yeah and maybe you will introduce me to your friends you yeah, never true. know yeah but this my, is most of my friends are my sisters <laughs> You are also another introvert, so I don't know yes. how we are gonna help each other. Mostly, I meet people through online, and yeah. YouTube, and online. Instagram. Yeah, yeah, I have people that I've met on online. To be honest, yes. and and they are good people, and we talk and stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you just have to be cautious. Yeah. How okay? How is the healthcare here? Would you feel comfortable getting a procedure done here? The we have. I think here. we have great doctors here. Mm -hmm. They are just some of them are very negligent simply because they don't get paid well. Yeah, true. And 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 you know even maternity mm -hmm. we have really plastic good. surgeons. There's a lot of you know it just depends like because 
how, how much are you willing to pay for you to get good uh, health provider yeah. but i think i think that it's very possible and i know yeah. that people usually go to india and, yeah. and other places to get mm. extensive uh, treatments yeah. but i think that even here in kenya there is but not yeah. yet touch wood i haven't really experienced, experienced hospitals here in kenya yet since i mm -hmm. came and yeah I ho hopefully my insurance is gonna come in come, uh, yeah. my cover is coming in soon mm -hmm. then from there i can you give can you do. Uh, yeah, but I can name a few of the hospital, it's especially if you are a foreigner, you can go to. Mm -hmm. They are like big hospital and they really care of for people. It's MP Shah, mm -hmm. uh, Nairobi, Nairobi It hospital. also depends, you know. It depends on your doctor and Kenyatta, Kenyatta Hospital. I feel like those three are, you can, you, you'll get taken care of mm, you know mm. i think that some hospital does, doesn't have good reputation mm -hmm. especially not to bash that hospital or whatnot i don't have i ha, i've had uh, bad experience as in not not personally but i've had people who've had bad experience in in nairobi hospital mm -hmm. so i think if you have personal yeah. family doctor whom you yeah, trust yeah. then you can go because you know in nairobi hospital they can mm -hmm. fake a disease that you don't even have and accumulate money oh. bill in the oh. hospital and have you stay and money accumulates wow. to millions yet you're not even not even that, that sick we yeah. just want the money money yeah so another question is wait let me see mm -hmm. uh do you drive or would you uh, suggest driving having a driver public transportation or ubers which one do you feel comfortable what's your public Pass. means of transportation here in kenya personally based on my pocket i'm doing a public transport mm -hmm. we have we have very comfortable public transportation here very reliable very easy to grab and you yeah. know and if you Okay, driving also is a is very lucrative and amazing, <laughs> but costs much. But we also have border border. We also have, have we Uber. have Uber. Yes. We have everything. So it just depend on your pockets and the comfortability. Ex if you want to experience the exactly. local local community local lifestyle, if you are into that, I will suggest like just taking the public transportation. Right now, I'm doing my tattoo. Yes, I'm not. Uh, I'm not really like a riding doing mm. anything else so it's okay what about like you can go to affordable neighborhoods so this affordable neighborhoods how much is rent like for one bedroom two bedroom or three bedroom one like nice house it, just it's a nice house. affordable you can easily get ten thousand mm -hmm. one bedroom house mm -hmm. but then the area is like those sites of kayole me me kayole uh, uh past Komorok and Saika mm -hmm. and you know Umoja and where the local community lives. yes just yeah. where you just be with the locals so, yeah in my area you can get so in my area you can get uh, uh, like not it's not that uh, how do you say it it's like local still but you can get for around that money mm -hmm. hundred and fifteen thousand Kenya shillings to twenty thousand Kenya shillings oh in your area yeah one does depend on where you want to live actually oh. we're just giving you a variation of areas yeah but the, the, what we are trying to get to is that you can pay much cheaper depending on yeah. the area yes. so we have upper class we have middle oh, class middle. and we have lower class yeah. so you can choose based on your pocket yeah. yes mm -hmm. so do you think kenya is a good travel hub and why yeah or why not uh, I think it's a good travel hub. Yes. But then you just need to be a bit more careful on <laughs> on how and on how you, dealings because if people find out that you are not a local, they'll they you can uh, be charged more. You but know? You, uh, you, most places you need to show your identification. Yeah, but sure maybe sure if there's a foreign a foreign uh how do you say there's a foreign price and a local price yeah and i believe so it, in every country it's the same because i i went to tanzania and it was the same i paid higher than tanzanians but if you are with a local you don't mm. have to pay yeah like for example if That's you are true. dating a kenyan woman 
If you yeah. want to go to a hotel, maybe you want to check into a hotel, let yeah. her be the one to go to check pay. in first. Oh. You know, she can go in, check, check in, and then uh, say room for two. So they don't know for two who is the Four, second yes. person. Is it a foreigner or not a foreigner? Wow. So yeah. it, that way they will not charge you based on a foreigner is coming here. Mm. But, but they are so petty. Mm -hmm. Like there is a vlogger called Amara. Mm -hmm. She, he came with her girlfriend and they did that. Mm -hmm. They booked online, like their sister booked online. But they still, when they were going now to check in, of course there are three of them. So they saw the guy, the ch the girl. Mm -hmm. She's dying, and so just, they changed the price. They told them this foreign price and it's local price. They are wow. so pretty. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just have to be careful. Yeah. yeah. But I believe Kenya is a travel hub. I've done videos about like where things to do in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have it all. We have safaris, we have the beaches, we have like bush, we have like everything mm -hmm. here in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the pros and cons of living in Nairobi, Kenya? Uh, pros, pros are Pros is it the good, good things? things yes. Okay, pros is like, uh, for example, fresh food. Uh, <laughs> yeah, things are freshly from the market, mm -hmm. not chemicalized as, as yeah, no, uh, fruits and vegetables are not chemicalized. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what else? But the Chinese are destroying our market. Yeah, they, they, they are. Mm -hmm. They are. They are bringing fake stuff. They are bringing fake plastic rice they're yeah. bringing uh, plastic fish and of course there are people in yeah. in in the higher places who are also facilitating them and getting money in the back door Chinese so it's are, not just them the Chinese are bad names. they've been allowed to do that because a place like the Emirates I like wish in our the Emirates, next president, you can't do that yeah I wish our next president mm -hmm. I just gets rid of the Chinese uh, business because it's not good yeah so what were you asking? Pros? Yes, the pros. Pros, you are home. Home is always the best. The community, yani, so there is no nothing at, the, at the racism or, no. you know, I'm going to be discriminated against because of no. how I look or because of my skin <laughs> color or what not here. Yeah. Even you walk around, no makeup, nobody gives a ish because <laughs> everybody, like, it's actually normal. people don't even put makeup much yeah, here. Me, people actually, are just, people will look at you and you're wearing makeup. Hair yeah, natural, oh. everybody's like, oh, okay, nobody yeah. gives a... Uh, yeah, mm. people are mm. hustling here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People have no time for like. Mm. It's just it's like me doesn't mean that we don't look good. We just like sort of are comfortable in our own skin a little bit more. Mm. Yeah. So another thing is the cons, the negatives. Uh huh. Electricity goes off anytime, any home. Uh, water, depending, but also water. The people who provide water are not very reliable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, things are not always working according to their plan. Uh, there is a, a bit, there's a, people just hike prices because uh, the, the government or the, what is not The government regulated. doesn't control the, yeah. especially the mask situation. Like yeah. During this pandemic, the they, price of a mask is 20, 20 shillings, but yeah. they hike it to 150 Kenyan shillings. Yeah, there's people sell things based on how they feel. Mm. You know, they can just sell something that costs this much, can mm. cost way more, especially yeah. based on what area are you at. And also, that I don't like. And also, um, if people find out that you are from diaspora abroad. and you're from abroad, automatically <laughs> you're a walking cash. So they assume that you will just cough money, like, oh gosh, they will really misuse you. Even if you don't want to be misused automatically. Yeah, so try and uh, try as much as possible to keep a low profile. A low, yeah. Yeah, and if you have an accent, because there are so many black Americans watching me, mm -hmm. African Americans watching mm -hmm. me, if you have an accent, that's a, a, like the price will go up. So if of you course. can, try and mingle with the local and yeah. let the local like bargain, bargain prices for you, for talk, you. Out, talk out for you, yeah. you know. I've done this a lot for many people. So, yeah. yeah. I'm the girl to check out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Selfish. And uh, me, another con I don't like is the politics. Try as much as with yeah. the politics. The, I never get, I don't know about that. The, like the, the government is letting us down. Like we have the most resources, but it's mostly misused by the 
the government. government and a lot of things could be much better, much better. but they we can't be bothered everything but they just mm. take our tax and uh, yeah on it. exactly they know how, what they do with our tax i don't I like, don't like talking about politics so next question <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what kind of jobs are available in the uae jobs available in the uae yes ah <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> mostly mostly I would just talk based on the field that I was in, mm-hmm. airline, airline industry, mm-hmm. depending on their high season when they they are recruiting, it's very easily, uh, they, you can easily get a job in, the, in an airline, yeah. even though they are very picky, especially, yeah. you know. Even if it's not the hairstyle job, they are very picky. Huh? Yeah, they are extremely picky. Yeah. And then also sales. People, I know that there are people who want to start from high there, but no, in the no, Emirates, people start from start from, from, from low. Yeah. There a lot of people who are now in managerial positions started, started by being from, sales or tea girl, you yeah. know, and or you a secretary. Any, you don't need any. The, the good thing about you is that you don't need any any skills or whatever. You you no, get you trained do, you on do, the job. You do. You do need. Yeah. At least you but need. But mostly get trained on the job. Yeah, you get trained on the job, but just they want you to have a personality and oh. also uh, interpersonal. The papers, they don't uh, care about so much about the papers. Interpersonal relationship? No, yeah. they do. They, they do, do now. They do because oh. even your papers has to be recredited. Mm-hmm. Even if you come with a university degree, mm-hmm. they have to make sure that That's that degree credited. is actually credited. Right. Oh. So nowadays they are very picky, but okay. things depending on which which company you want to work for. Uh, mm-hmm. There are companies who are very picky, but there are some like for the for example airline. You just need mm-hmm. to have a high school diploma, and that's it. And it's good for you to have other. I know that there are nurses, there are doctors, there are engineers, there are you yeah. know what. They are joining airline industry just for the sake of traveling, and then afterwards they will upgrade whatever yeah. within the company itself. Yeah. So it's very easy for you to like sort of if you have higher education, the better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. So and in uh, in Nairobi, are there any jobs? Are there any kind of what kind no, of jobs are not, in Nairobi? Not that I know of. Me, honestly. I'll speak because I've been here all my life. Mm-hmm. Like getting a job, you need to know people. You need mm-hmm. to know who's who's in the country, mm-hmm. and uh, you need to have godfathers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the unemployment rate is really high. So, if you are coming to Kenya from the diaspora. Please have like a backup plan, like have your investments. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Don't depend on any job here. Mm -hmm. What does a typical day look like for you now that you've moved back? (laughs) A typical day, gosh, starts with me just uh, lazing around the house until 10 a.m. And, uh, but you deserve it. You've been working so hard. Exactly. Yeah. So I wake up around. I don't wake up early. I wake up around nine o'clock. Yeah. Sometimes eight o'clock, depending. Then I lazy around. I take shower and then I go run my errands, and then I come back. Um, eight o'clock. But most times I don't. I don't do anything. I'm lazing at home Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. So yeah. So what? Uh, how much can someone expect to earn in Nairobi? Honestly, people earn money here. People earn, yeah. but it's just that people get job from a word of mouth. Like I have a cousin, I have a friend, yes. I have this, you know. Mm-hmm. And people earn. You can think that there's actually there are people who earn even up to six hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. You know. But that's a manager position. No, right? but there are people who earn money. It's just that we don't know about them. Yeah, we but there are people who do but very well. But for my end, I can tell you, uh, just a mere job, you get around like 20,000 Kenyan shillings. Mm-hmm. That's, um, and many local people, that's their, their average salary. From 20,000 to 50,000 Kenyan shillings. Yeah. And a managerial position, around 100,000 Kenyan shillings. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's what I know. This is my experience, yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I told you, you have to know someone, to know someone. You yeah, have to have you the godfather. Okay? Yeah, for you to have yeah. best jobs. In Kenya, is who, know, who, who knows? Who knows? Who. It's unfair, though. It's very very unfair. There's high nepotism, there's tribalism, there's everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. 
so but if you come here with your investment you're really good if you have money in kenya you're really good mm -hmm. if you can afford like it's really good here life is really good yeah. that i cannot complain mm -hmm. at all even many youth who want to go abroad like uh the way she did you just go abroad to gather money capital and then you come back and invest in kenya that's yeah. what i've uh, seen most of my my family my cousins they do that mm -hmm. they mostly do that they just go abroad and then they come back to invest here in yeah. kenya they come back here and then somebody so might just want, want to go outside to gather like to invest so that they can invest back Mm -hmm. And somebody might want to know exactly like what to invest in what, in what yes, uh, mm -hmm. mostly real estate, yes, buying land and developing that will get a hundred percent returns, yeah, buying land, building uh, uh, residential homes or, or rentals, yeah, that that is like an, a, a, a source of income that is very constant, yeah. that is very good, actually. And then mm -hmm. you won't get like if you you won't get ripped off. Yeah. yeah of course building you'll get ripped off you'll while get building ripped off. for sure yeah. we are going to do another video for yeah. that tomorrow that one is horrible so That's if you have him. questions about building in kenya in africa this is the girl so keep mm. the comments coming down ask below. me any questions, any questions. we're going to do enough. a different <laughs> question we're doing a totally different how she managed to build while wow. still working abroad uh -huh. well yes. yeah exactly yeah how much oh, okay how much oh yeah how much money do you think someone needs to have to have to live comfortably in nairobi honestly that's a very a very like complex a good question it's a of very, living ah uh, it depends with somebody's lifestyle Our lifestyle for example you need somebody there are people who take ubers yeah. there are people who can't take a massage <laughs> you are like an uber person obviously yeah. you're gonna spend a little bit more uh, there are people who always want to eat, eat out. out. You yes. want to club instead of like <laughs> having buying a wine from a supermarket and coming, uh, coming and, and drinking, drinking wine, wine like now what she's doing. Yeah. You want to go out there in the club and have it there. Yeah, you know, to eat there. Of course, it's gonna be much more expensive, right? Yeah. True. And uh, depending with your lifestyle, mm -hmm. so we can't say exactly how, how much. much. It's not easy for you to say, but. I think that even when you are not paying rent, like you've built and you mm -hmm. have a place to stay and you're not paying rent, mm -hmm. still you can approximately, if you're not as an extravagant person, I would say 30,000. Yeah, that's true. 30,000 a month if, inclusive of paying paying bills. Yeah. And uh, if you are really extravagant, you can stretch it to $1,000, uh, that 100,000 Kenyan shillings. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm saying in dollars because k -Tribe, they always ask me questions there in, in dollars. dollars. Yeah. yeah. So what salary is good enough to live comfortably in Nairobi? <laughs> I think I can answer that more than you. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. because I've been working. Um, I think if you are living like really fru frugal, that's how you say it in English. Yeah, frugal. I think 100,000 Kenyan shillings when you're paying rent and you're paying every utilities and you are uh, sometimes once in a week you eat but out. How many people earn a hundred thousand though? But I'm just telling them. <laughs> they want to know. Oh. A <laughs> hundred thousand. That's if you want to live like a standard living. But if you are say like you want to really like uh, you're eating all day, every day at home, every entertainment, you don't have entertainment. I think thirty thousand can get you along but depending on how many mouths you're feeding though yeah so it's really a very difficult question yeah. to answer because yeah. thirty thousand, like for example you know you one person you have to also think about your health insurance right so many that's the problem there's a lot of things Kenyans. there's a lot of things that you have we don't to have put. we don't think about health insurance oh yeah mostly no, well, well, me, Just I was used to it, it, so... <laughs> you, 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 like... It. No, I had to, I had to cut one, because I was just like, oh, my God, I need one. Because I was yeah. always having it, so... Yes. You, you will need one, once yes, I if know you, you find need yourself one, in a situation. It's a, it's a hustling situation here in Kenya. Like, mm. if you're a local Kenya, if you're a local citizen here, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but, you know, NHIF costs 500 per month. Yeah, it does. It's good. And many companies pay for you the NHIF. Yeah. So I think I should do that also. It is good because, you know, there are how many people, yeah. like, for example, the guy who was terminally sick. 
Yeah. He had to ask for donations from people, and nowadays, if yeah. you ask even for your family members, mm. donation, yeah. they are like, "What have you been doing? You don't have health care." Yeah, Everybody, true. it's better. Yeah, mm. true. I can I can attest to it. Like my sister, when she gave birth to Solange, mm -hmm. she had an NHIF. The company paid for her NHIF, mm -hmm. so she had a C -sec, like a emergency C section, and the NHIF paid for every exactly. single thing. Exactly. Yes. You know, you don't know what emergency can you can come. And so then, if you if you're here, like, like I don't know how much about foreigners. Mm -hmm. I know more of like if you are Kenyan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you sorry, you can actually save a lot of money and think that, oh, this money is going to help me. I'm going to live comfortably in yeah. Kenya. But if you have don't have health insurance, you can you can burn that money like Easily. this from just hospital bill because it's yeah. very expensive. Yeah. Mm. So And the insurance is really affordable, right? Yeah, you yeah. pay yearly or you, quarterly? You pay yearly, annually, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable seeing how much you pay? Yes, I pay yeah. I pay UAP mm -hmm. and I took uh, there's different covers. Mm -hmm. So I there's a, a 500,000 uh, mm -hmm. and there's a uh, 1 million and there's yeah, 3 million. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Oh. It's like a cover. Cover. Oh, cover. Okay, okay, there's no, a 500 three, 1 million, 3 million and 5 million. Mm -hmm. So you can choose like they can cover you up to. Yeah. But if it if it, if it exceeds five hundred, mm -hmm. they are not paying. If that is if you take a five hundred thousand oh. cover, so uh, for me the one I took, so I pay like uh, sixty three thousand a year. That is annually. Okay. Yeah. So that one is inclusive of maternity. Uh, if you have like a hair the airlift. If you have you are like let's emergency say emergency and, emergency then, you are and then you are airlifted. And abroad, mm -hmm. like you go abroad and you needed uh, health, uh, you know, ins to be insured, it covers, so you can use it even abroad. Oh, so, okay. yeah. Okay, that's really mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. So, that's UAP if you're interested. It's not yeah. sponsored. We just like sharing things that will help you guys. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And how, how should someone pack to move here and what's the weather like here mm -hmm. in Kenya? The weather, it's very unpredictable, to be honest. Especially now, we are not supposed to be having raining season, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not supposed to be cold now. But yes. sometimes the weather just becomes really unbearably yeah. cold. And maybe mm. what is cold for us is not cold yes, for Yes, I wanted to yeah. say that too. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, see, I was in the Emirates where it used to be up to 55 degrees. Yeah. That is how hot it used to be. And now mm -hmm. I'm here and I'm like, it's, it's cold. cold. So it's like 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah, yeah. 18 degrees. Mm -hmm. And I think the weather... And it is... depends where you want to go. In Nairobi, it's uh, cold. Uh, it's usually cold in the morning and mm -hmm. even at night. And then it's hot, like um, cold normal very... we weather around the uh, afternoons. Evening but it's different. very cold. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's really a good weather, I can say. Yeah. And the coastal area is uh, really tropical. hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. tropical. So what should someone pack? Think... What should someone pack to move here? Why? What? How should oh. someone pack to move here? Good I jacket, move? sweaters, mm -hmm. sweaters, because you don't need... Okay, there's one thing I found. In Kenya, there's a lot of idle youths that are just like sitting beside the roads. They check you out and they like... <laughs> for me, I don't like that. So yeah, I like modest. something modest, you know, cover my hands and my, you know, yeah. uh, a long sweater. Not you know, something modest. You, you always want to... Mm -hmm. That's for me. I don't yeah. like to, you know. It's true. I can attest to that. Yeah. If you like attention, if you like you attention, but you will attract wrong attention. wrong attention. So better to just be modest and <laughs> yeah. don't give them a reason to like uh, whistle, whistle at you flat. and you know, yeah. and don't wear short, very short, depending on where you, which yeah. area. Uh, but I feel you're more safe if you just wear modest. Modest, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you sh we are shopping experience for furniture here in Kenya compared to the UAE. Like, I think we've answered that one on the top. Yeah, furniture, like, good I, furniture. Like, yeah, like the quality of furniture here and the quality of uh, in the UAE. We have great fundis mm -hmm. who actually handymen, as in uh, masons yeah. uh, or whatever, who mm -hmm. can make good 
so quality sofas but, but they are, they don't last long they're not long and another lasting. thing you have to like be very strict and re- like and monitor monitor like very strictly exactly yeah. uh but for me i'd rather buy imported like uh mm-hmm. like good imported ones the yeah, ones true. that you can also and even have in the us bit. and have one and bring it and yeah. then it lasts you a lifetime, lifetime. that's very yeah. true Rather than buying this in the side of the road. But I love your knee, your huh? leather sofa. Yeah, I bought I them, them in uh, in Furniture Palace. I love them. Mm-hmm. So Furniture Palace, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's expensive than Amazon or Ikea or a yeah. local fundi. Yeah. But... They last you forever. At least you see, like, it's ready-made. You see what you want. Yeah. And the, yeah. the, 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 the material is much, yeah. very much quality. Yeah. Mm. So... Uh, could you tell us about the visa process, the work ma- permit for UAE with a Kenyan passport? Like, what was your process to get the visa? Oh, okay, it depends. For me, permit. okay, for me, I went there via mm-hmm. an agency. Mm-hmm. So, meaning that whichever whoever recruited me mm-hmm. recruited me through an agency here. Mm-hmm. So I left my plane ticket and visa. Everything was already mm-hmm. arranged for because I, I left to be hired to go there for to work. hiring. Mm-hmm. But then there are people. Okay, so whichever company brought me here is the one who sponsored my visas and all all, all that. So and visas uh, visas go three years you know uh, like renewable mm-hmm. after every three years now they've put visa it two or work years permit. Work visa. Or residence work visa it's or called residence visa, visa. Okay. so residence visa you can use it to work oh, yeah so okay. that's what is called residence visa oh. and uh, um, residence visa is also work permit mm-hmm. yeah and you the company that hires you is the one you who's supposed to give it. it to you yeah but then there's also a spouse visa that one you can so long as you're a resident you can find work oh, okay that's yeah really nice. and what what's your opinion about like uh, did you pay it for the agency to look for work for you you are saying about the UAE visa with a Kenyan passport ah oh, okay did, did you pay did you pay the agency to look for work for you yes I paid but I think for me yeah. Uh, I didn't pay much because the mm-hmm. whichever company that hires, as mm-hmm. in whichever company that recruits through a, an agency, mm-hmm. usually pays for the workers. But you know, Kenyans, uh, Kenyans like Kenyans. Are, I'm one of the Kenyans, but we are very, very. We are hustlers and we are very cunning. Me, I have this. I have a one experience. I went to an interview. The agency, like the people who are like recruiting the company, was paying for everything. Just and they paid the agency money already yes. for recruiting us, but they charge us a hundred thousand Kenyan shillings. Yeah. This is per- personal experience. Most of them hundred thousand Kenyan shillings. So me, I say this job is not worth it for me to pay a hundred thousand Kenyan shillings to go and work there. And it literally, I'll be like slaving for one year. Yeah. Like that's what I thought. Like because the salary was not much. If it was like maybe I was getting a hundred thousand Kenya shilling per month, I could say, okay, let me just work for free. No, the month, salary is very nothing, honestly. Yeah. Not so as much. Mm-hmm. We just be careful when you're looking at for work. Mm-hmm. Where your options also. So um, I didn't finish with the visa thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um. After you've, when, if you've gone with the camp, someone recruits you straight from here, mm-hmm. they will provide for you accommodation, a health insurance, and a visa, mm-hmm. a residence visa. And flight also. And also flight. Mm-hmm. And of course, you, these people will ask you to pay them again, which the happens. Agencies, Agency yeah. always double rips people yeah. off. But just be very your option. Very normal. So, ni ni ni. Enda, enda tu juu. Niko kwa kamera. Takata, takata. Okay, I was too wanna nisumbu. Was the journey takata out all that. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. so, uh, and then after that, um, but then you can also go on a visit visa. Yeah, and then if, if you, you have a friend there. Not really. Even okay. if you don't have a friend, yeah. you can go on a visit visa. Mm-hmm. And then you can arrange your own living situation, pay for your bed space, whatnot, and then. So how much is the bed space? Oh lordy, minimum. the bed space. Oh, <laughs> minimum. I don't know what is what is a. Let's just say approximately, uh, seven hundred dirhams. 
That's like seventeen thousand. Yeah, let's just say, but that's a bed space. That is a room with other other girls, and you share. There's double decker beds. Mm -hmm. You just share where you sleep. You just uh, like uh, pay for the space where you live. So it's called bed space. Mm -hmm. How much is that? That's like nineteen thousand Kenyan shillings. Yeah. So you have to put that amount every month, and then you have to put transportation. And it's uh, expensive, right? Yeah, transportation. transportation is but you can you can have a card. Usually you oh, get the card a card. Oh, the card is much more. Card for the metro. Yeah, for the no metro. Yeah, card for the metro is like you you know. And mm -hmm. also there's a card for the buses. It's mm -hmm. also not so expensive, but it's better than taxis. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you want to go to an interview very fast. It forces you to take a taxi. Or you wake up very much early, but even you wake up so early, you find the Truck. line is already so, you know, yeah. the interview line. Everybody usually are uh, for the interviews because a lot of Africans usually go to get a job. So, yeah. So, so if you are not choosy, you can get like a job really quickly. Yeah, but if that's like choose. working in KFC. Like, for example, like working in KFC, you can get really quick. Yeah. You can get a job as a cleaner. So yes, quick. even a cleaner. A so housemaid, quick. very quick. And how much is the like the housemaid? Uh, like, like okay, housemaid is really tricky because you know how the situations like right now currently you don't know, like they may mistreat you. So no, maybe no, most no. people like maybe cleaning the malls, like uh, even the KFC one. It's much better than staying in someone house because. Many we we've had many bad experiences as Kenyans going there. Yeah, but the housemaid situation usually, mm. uh, what I would say according mm. to what I've heard and the stories and here, guys, I'm not discriminating on anybody. Mm. It depends on the nationality of whoever you're working for. Oh. So a lot of people, mm. uh, Arabs also depends on which <laughs> kind of Arabs you're working for because many of them really mistreat maids. Yeah. Many of them, majority. Yeah. So it just depends on. Which so nationality? most of them likes, uh, you know, like for example, here in Kenya, if you work in a bar, people look down on you because yeah. you're working, you're a, a bartender. Like, what is this? That is your job. But then in, in, the, in other countries, bartenders are respected. Like also in the Emirates, yeah, a bartender is like, you cannot even touch her. Yeah. But here in Kenya, it's like, that's a job that is just uh, a yeah, very bad job for, for our they, prostitution. They, yeah. yeah. And again, also the same as being a nanny or, you know, you can go with an au pair, you mm -hmm. can become a nanny. Uh, so I would say that Europeans treat nanny much more better. Yeah, at least, uh, okay, at least they follow the human rights. Yeah, because yes, to them, a nanny that. is very important, like yeah. nanny or via au pair or something at like that. At least they don't mistreat your human rights. Yeah. Because that's, the, uh, I, I'm going to say, that's the worst thing. That's why I, I always feared like the UAE and because of the mistreatment and yeah. things like that. Yeah. But I would say it depends on who you get. It's also yeah. individual to an individual. I would just say have to all be open-minded. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And get out of a bad situation. Yeah. So is it true they keep your passport? Yes. Even my previous company kept our passport. True. Yeah, they kept our passport. Which one? Which one? Uh, I used to work for a company called yes. Apparel Group. They keep, they keep, they keep your passport. Yeah, they keep your passport. Wow. Yeah, okay, they keep so your passport, and then if you get a job with a heavier company mm -hmm. than them, they have to buy you from them. Because they brought you from Africa they and they paid money. for you. Yes. So if somebody have to take you from them, they buy you. So for example, I have this situation. Mm -hmm. I have two friends. Mm -hmm. uh, they both invited me. They they are teachers in Qatar, you know, mm -hmm. and they both have like a two. Uh, their company give them a two bedroom. Mm -hmm. So they are inviting me to go there. I can go there and uh, with a visiting visa, and then I start searching for work, so that I, I don't I, go with any agencies. Yes, you can so go on get, a visit visa, mm -hmm. but staying with them, remember, also companies have regulations on how mm -hmm. long visitors can stay with yeah, you. Yeah. So, so I can just take a risk. And even Qatar is even much stricter than <laughs> much stricter yeah, than, than Dubai. Wow. Yeah. So it just depends on cause But they can invite guests, that's why they have two bed two two bedrooms. You can invest, invite they, guests they, but yeah. they have they have a duration. limited time. You cannot stay consecutively for three months because yeah. the visa is always three months yeah yeah that's good to know so mm -hmm. are you happy here 
So far, yeah. <laughs> so far, I would say, Are yeah. Are you ripping off the benefits of mm. all your hard work? Mm, yeah. <laughs> So far, nothing. So far, nothing. There, there's like a lot of what you imagined. Uh, I, I feel like I feel like I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit more happier here. Yeah. That Do you miss working? No. Like the flights. I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't miss miss my previous job, guys. But you are so excited when you started out. Right? Of course, of yeah. course, of course. Moving to country, to country. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> But then after some time, oh, you get, it gets old. It's very much nuisance. Now you feel like I have to wake you have, up at three a.m. to go to work. And then you can't keep up with friends. You can't uh, keep up. Like your life is more of a single person. No, they don't have yeah. time. Like uh, you don't have time. The time difference more, from country to country. Like you can't keep a yeah. friendship for long. And most flight attendants are very superficial. Like they don't. They don't like people. That's just, just want, oh. most of them just don't like people. They are a, a very much uh, introverts. I think that's so. That they are just yeah. like because you know what they do is like just smile yeah. because they need to. But it's so not that, like not many of them are like genuinely like you know happy, happy. to be in the customer care field and stuff. Yeah. So maybe they are jet lagged. They are tired. They don't yeah. have time for friends. They don't have time. Yeah. So yeah, it's not easy to make friends in the in this industry. Yeah, mm-hmm. industry. Mm-hmm. I think I, I already have another topic about dating and being an I will do that because right? I know that a lot of people have usually assume that hair hostesses have, have boyfriends in each and every country uh, they go, and yeah. they are always dating pilots. Yes, and they I are. will burst your bubbles. Yes. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> that would be when I was young. Mm-hmm. I swear, <laughs> I, even I have be- a, I have a video for that. For, yeah, even me you. before I got the job, you thought I was that. always thinking hair huh. hostesses cannot be single. No, 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 mm-hmm. they cannot be single, <laughs> never, because they are very. They are inviting men in every mm-hmm. hotel they go to, uh-huh. <laughs> but mm-hmm. you're usually tired because I, okay, I've gained. I, that's why I love YouTube. I've mm-hmm. gained more knowledge, like like personal knowledge. Watching like air hostess vlogs, mm-hmm. like videos, they're always tired. I, will, I like now I feel so bad. <laughs> I feel so bad. It's very true. Yeah. Hey, it's not an easy job, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, how can people get in touch with you? Um, I have my my socials. So I have a Facebook page, the Nalotic Empress, mm-hmm. and I also have here the Instagram, the Nalotic Empress. I also have. YouTube. YouTube, the Nalotic Empress. So yeah, you can everything will pop up on the mm-hmm. screen and on the link down below. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thank you so much for intro, for thank, like thank we have so much videos coming back. And yeah. Forth, so stay tuned. Subscribe. Comment down below if you have any more other questions for Nalotic Empress. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so happy. Like I'm like. I'm thank so you for happy. having me in <laughs> yes. your channel. Bye. Thank you. Hugs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> bye bye.